No, from uh, watching uh, most of the NBA, <laughs> I I thought I was going to be uh... a bit shocked. And when I mean a bit shocked, I mean a bit shocked. And now I'm really shocked. Because how the fuck, over time, we came from, the Knicks are going to tank. I think Katie and Kyrie are going to be free agents later on in the future. And we can get two All-Stars by giving them super max deal for cap space. We'll sacrifice a little bit of potential talent for two official guys so we can finally get a ring. Fair enough! I mean, it's a dumb thing, but it works. It's a smart thing. I guess, guess who capitalized? The Nets, that are also in the New York, that's also New York, in a huge market, and that can capitalize on the exact same thing. And the Nets have accomplished way more in 20 years than the New York Knicks. It's hard to say, even though they, re uh, you know, they relocated. They have the worst, they had one of the worst record, uh, worst records in the NBA running on. And they don't have the most popular draft picks other than the Knicks, at least having a few. But the Nets made it to two NBA finals in a row. Consistently made it into the playoffs more than the New York Knicks. The last time you've seen the New York Knicks make the playoffs was like 2012 or the 13 season. And you tell me not to put more credits on the Nets when they finally actually had a legit All-Star this, this previous season and uh, made the playoffs, went above 500 nearly, uh, and, you know, upset a team by one game. Literally had the most popular team and uh, literally had a pretty good season. They haven't made the playoffs since 2015, and previously they actually capitalized the same thing on three big major talents, but they were out of their prime. They doing, they weren't doing well in the free agency market. They weren't capitalizing on the real role players because most of the role players were still trying to stick with contending teams. Thanks in like the early 2010s, there was actually more parity in the NBA, so more teams were a bit more players were a bit more loyal to their teams. Other than this year, that literally we came from Russell Westbrook that spent that spent over 10 plus years in the Oklahoma City Thunder's organization. From setback to setback to getting shut out in the first NBA Finals appearance, losing their best small forward ever, second to be second best to LeBron James, to Western Conference appearance and choking a three-one lead, into Westbrook getting them into minuscule records, picking up a small forward to leave with Kawhi Leonard. This is the saddest thing in Oklahoma City Thunder's organization, and now. We are seeing the Nets at work try to make history. They finally picked up Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant. Well, Kevin Durant won't play. Kevin Durant won't play for a majority of the year after a terrible ACL tear he had, like the Western Conference Finals, when he faced off against the Trailblazers. He tried to play, like, game, like game four. It was an elimination game he had to play after an ACL tear. Sorry about that. And, and uh, like, it's been a really shocker season. And now, yeah, Kyrie that's out. I mean, no, Kyrie that's completely healthy. He picked up the, uh, Kevin Durant. And... You left the rest of the cap space so you can sign at least one notable deal in DeAndre Jordan that I really think the Nets messed up at. Because, like, I understand DeAndre Jordan has a close relationship with these guys, but you you already was doing so smart with Kevin Durant and Kyrie. Kyrie's a great ball handler, can flash it out, and can literally do anything he wants with the basketball. They also acquired Wilson Chandler for a cheap price for one year. Garrett Temple, Henry Ellison, David Nuaba, that's a great defensive assist. And Deng Adele, 
for a huge con for a for a ten day contract. Even though they lost D'Angelo Russell to the Golden State Warriors, Ed Davis to the Utah Jazz. I'm going to the Utah Jazz because they really had a sleep off season. They got the best players. They really improved their bench. Jeff Green was a great. Uh, he was a great part of the team. They need some muscle. And they still keep a good finisher and literally the high, one of the highest scorer, like second and a half of the season before he had like a twenty game injury. In Karis Levert, got only a four year seven million de- dollar deal. They still have Jared Allen. That's a good steal, especially you you have a young rim protector that can slam it on the floor. He's literally just a younger DeAndre Jordan. All I thought they needed was a more versatile big, and they couldn't get the Marcus Cousin to Brooklyn. Joe Harris, that also won three point, uh, the three point player of the year. Spencer Dinwiddie, that I thought was pretty all right. He said the second to last season he had was pretty good. And Terry on Prince, they acquired for cap space reasons so they can pick up three all stars. They just needed to trade him, uh, trade him, and Rudy on Kirkux. So that's literally their bench. They literally have decent role players. Jared, Garrett Temple's all right. Dozan, uh, Dozan Mosa and David Nwabu can do their roles perfectly. And only they have uh, five million in dead cap. Cap space now is up to eighteen million. By God Almighty! Oh man. And all they have to show for it is four years, $164 million for a 30-year-old Kevin Durant that already has a history of, of ACL injuries. Kyrie Irving, that's not even, that's like near as, that's at his prime now. Over his time already winning an NBA championship and being really consistent, having two, like a major injury, like his first time in Boston. Then getting shut out in four games with a no Ola Depot Pacers. No, no, they shut out the Pacers. They got destroyed against the Milwaukee Bucks. And DeAndre Jordan that hopped against two teams. That was, uh, he decided to go to Dallas because he's he was raised in Texas. So it was favoritism there. Plus, he wanted to work with uh, Luka Doncic and play with Dirk Nowitzki. And it could have been the best time for him to... Because they traded away a lot of pieces for Porzingis. That was involving DeAndre Jordan. So he went to the New York Knicks for a bit. And if I can pull up his stats. He only played 19 games of the rest of the season. Only played 26 minutes. Got only 10 points. And had his worst rebounding numbers. Than what happened 2012 to 13. He's literally hasn't progressed defensively since his time in the Clippers. Like his early times in the Clippers, he was getting like 2.2 blocks a season. He's now averaging 1.1 blocks a season, and that's now his career average. And it's tough for like DeAndre Jordan because like literally the Clippers utilize him because for a great distributor in a decent West Coast style with Doc Rivers as the head coach, it's not like saying. Like, the Brooklyn Nets head coach, uh, Atkinson, is not that bad at all. It's just DeAndre Jordan's athleticism declined a lot. And seeing that he gets a four-year contract for a guy that doesn't even seem like he wants to stay long in this franchise, I really don't trust DeAndre Jordan. He might even get injured, and that's a rougher mistake because... He, this guy's already, like, 31 years old, and we can't just rely on him giving a multi-year deal. And he hasn't remained consistent for his, as long as he was in Dallas in, in New York. Now he's a... Now he's a... He's just a shell of his former self. I felt like he should have stayed in Dallas if it wasn't for that Porzingis trade. Like, a, one more season in Dallas, and maybe we can pick it up, and we could have picked him up this year for cheap. That's uh, that's a really huge, really huge contract we have to eat up, plus two major contracts for 100 
and $65 million from Kevin Durant. Even though he just recently suffered a, one, a huge injury in the NBA playoffs this year and didn't even get to win. DeMarcus Cousins would come here for cheap. And even though he's a versatile big that I swear anybody, if they had the right money and the right team, DeMarcus Cousins would hit there on a dime. But thanks, the Warriors don't give a shit about him. Thanks, it looks like he barely even cared. Like, they treated him, like, he treated that team like a means to an end, just so we could have a meaningful career. And went to the, uh, goddamn Lakers, because LeBron needs an actual big. He can't just rely on Tyson Chandler and a bit of JaVale McGee for rebounding assistance. They also need offensive threats that literally lacked in their previous season with LeBron's first year there. I feel like, uh, the, don't get me wrong, I feel like this is going to be like a 49-win team, 51-win team. I have not that much high expectations when you, like, you have good tools, but it's going to just be a bit better than the previous Brooklyn Nets that had, like, a Cinderella season after, like, previous years of, like, struggle of rebuilding and sacrificing all their picks for whatever the fuck Kevin Durant, Paul Pierce, and Ray Allen was going to do for us. I really doubt that this uh, Brooklyn Nets team is going to live up to the expectations, even though I really like your role players. I love the Brooklyn Nets team. I feel like they shouldn't have gotten rid they shouldn't have uh, left Jared Dudley. Getting David Nwaba was a bit of a steal. Terion Prince is a decent athletic shoot first dude, but he has a huge contract to eat up with four years, ten million. Yeah, decent contract to eat up. Jared Allen, a good stay. I don't mind Garrett Temple, but he seems like a second like a second half of the season guy, like we would trade him if he's gonna be like averaging two or three points a season. I mean of the games we play. And uh, Spencer Dinwiddie. I don't know if he's going to show off that much because obviously they want to give a majority of the minutes to Kyrie Irving. So I, I, if you guys have like higher low expectations for the Brooklyn Nets team, always comment down below. Com uh, subscribe, share. Always willing to listen. Always willing to read. Always willing to go over New York teams because somehow the more important ones just continue to fall. My God, I don't even. I didn't even know it was like second half of the season for the WNBA. Like, who the fuck still watches the WNBA? It's gonna be on 2K20, and uh, by God, it's gonna be on 2K20. Can't wait for rant videos to come out. Well, thank you for watching, everybody. Hopefully, you enjoyed this take on the Brooklyn Nets off season. Fucked up as a spider. <laughs> uh, so. Thank you for watching, everybody. Hopefully you liked this video. And get ready for whatever the hell I have for, like, many other teams in the NBA, especially the Lakers. Thank you for watching.